Hi there. Hello. All right, I am pulling up my presentation. Um, your presentation will be shared from us. Perfect. So, um, unfortunately, then you have to say next slide. But uh, welcome you here uh, at Tedwig. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and thank you all for taking the time to hear my presentation on the semantic mapping of the geologic time scale. To begin, I would like to refer you all to the GitHub repository that should be linked in the chat right there. Um, this repository is going to act as a reference throughout this presentation to the work that I am discussing with you all today. My hope is that by the end of this presentation, you will have a better understanding of the processes necessary for maintaining a controlled vocabulary within data collections and what it would mean to automate this procedure. So we'll just hop on over to the next slide. Um, to start, I am going to give you all a brief introduction of the geologic timescale. The geologic timescale subdivides Earth's history into a hierarchical set of time intervals based on the relative positioning of rock layers in the stratigraphic record. The most widely accepted variation is on the next slide, and it is um, the International Commission of Stratigraphy's chronostratigraphic timescale. Due to this vocabulary being a versatile and globally applicable temporal reference, it is used as a reference point for the majority of biological, paleontological, and geological collections worldwide. This presentation addresses my use of the chronostratigraphic timescale as a controlled vocabulary when mapping verbatim values into the Global Biodiversity the Informatics Facility, or GBIF, data repository. Um, next slide. The hierarchical structure of the time scale comprises ranks of increasing temporal granularity, where eon represents the largest time intervals and age the narrowest. The upper and lower boundary of each interval is based on the relative positioning of the stratigraphic record. For example, the Mesozoic era, as seen here, is subdivided into three periods, the Cretaceous, Jurassic, and the Triassic. Therefore, fossils in a Jurassic age formation are older relative to fossils in a Cretaceous age formation. Next slide, please. Out of the over 1 million total records in the collection of published data sets reviewed for this project, over 6,700 were unique verbatim values for geologic timescale terms. Less than 5% were exact matches with the standardized timescale terminology. The complete breakdown of the verbatim values of each Darwin Core term is available on the Darwin Core Quality Assessment Repository, which is accessible in GitHub. Many factors contribute to high variability in published values, which is outside of the scope of this particular project. The primary focus of this project is to develop a pragmatic and standardized process for mapping verbatim values to a controlled vocabulary in published data sets with implications for addressing the interoperability of published data sets through a common set of controlled values. Next slide, please. Each term was entered into the GBIF repository within the upper or lower bound of the five classifications of the chronostratigraphic timescale. We implemented the Darwin core standardized terms as the temporal bounds for the geologic time in this vocabulary, of which can be found in the GitHub repository for this presentation alongside their definitions. The first step I took in this mapping process was ensuring that each term was placed within its corresponding boundary. This problem would be a rather easy fix in an automated system as each given boundary encapsulates clearly stated values, meaning that when a value is out of place, it can quickly be moved to the boundary in which it lies. About 13% of the values in this data were misplaced and in the incorrect boundary. Next slide, please. All data points could be mapped into one of these six categories, including terms that were an exact match to a term in the controlled vocabulary without any uncategorized outliers or inconsistencies unaccounted for. Next slide. The most common category was syntax errors, with 40% of the values following, falling into this category. These included quotation marks, capitalization, and any other form of annotation, all of which could be identified and removed through automation, along with values in languages other than that of the controlled vocabulary. Next slide, please. Automated identification of alternate terms is based on a source vocabulary. New alternate terms will be identified and subsequently not recognized by an automated system. 
This requires a mechanism to identify and add to the existing alternate term source vocabulary on an ongoing and permanent basis. Here, alternate terms refer to non-ICS values of ge geologic time. These terms made up about 26% of the verbatim values and included regional terms, biostratigraphic zones, and values of a higher granularity. The ICS timescale is a reference point for many specialized timescales, so I was able to relate many of these terms to where they fell within the timescale that I was working with. Taking note of terms like these and how they relate to the current controlled vocabulary is vital because it provides details with a generalized that a generalized vocabulary may not be able to encapsulate. Next slide, please. Synonyms are the only alternate terms with a direct ICS counterpart and therefore directly mappable to the controlled vocabulary. These made up 6% of the verbatim values. Once I found a synonym for a valid value, I myself was able to quickly identify that synonym when mapping to the rest of the vocabulary, confirming that in the event of automation, Mapping synonyms, as long as they are recognized as such, would very much be possible. Next slide, please. 11% of the data were erroneous values of terms that are not values of geologic time. This includes verbatim values such as recent, unknown, or any other term that does not relate specifically to geologic time. These terms are easily identifiable in a data set throughout, uh, through automation because they do not match any values in the controlled vocabulary. Next slide, please. Due to the variability found in the data for this repository, I found it necessary to develop a guideline to ensure consistency within the mapped data. To transform this procedure into a repeatable process via an automated system, I clearly stated how to approach every inconsistency I encountered in the data I was working with. For example, I remedied the issue of variability with rules that would ensure consistency within the valid values I was mapping. It was vital to cover every matter of irregularity in as few rules as possible, one of which you can see here. This rule is in place to manage misspelled values in the data of which some are unable to be mapped to valid values. Next slide, please. The we are at the three minute mark, just to let you know. Thank you. The pragmatic guidelines for this rulemaking process make it possible to partially automate mapping procedures. The need for human verification cannot be ignored though, and it will most likely always be a part of the process to some degree. The ultimate goal though, is to build a comprehensive, repeatable application that is agnostic to a specific knowledge domain. These rules are fully documented with examples in the GitHub repository and are provided with both human readable and programmatic instructions for partial automation. The repository also contains a collection of authoritative source information, extended support documentation, and web-based resources about the geologic timescale and its semantic use. Given the prevalence of issues regarding verbatim values across the community, the development of more generalized guidelines would prove uniquely advantageous for digitization activities. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please email. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, we will wait for the discussion um, until the end of the session, but as I already said, please use the Slack channel to already post your session. And with this, I welcome our next speaker. Thank you.